Hi everyone, and welcome to week one of our Sweet Childhood Memory Sew Along, hosted by Pat Sloan at her website, I Love to Make Quilts.com. The theme for this week is fairy tales. Which was your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, jump over to Pat's website, download this week's free pattern, come back here, and I'll show you how to do it. As always, we start with all of our pieces and parts cut out, and you can see these on the table in front of me now. From here, all of these pieces are as per the pattern. These pieces here are for our flying geese, and I'm going to do both sets four at a time. The pieces below are for our half square triangles. One lot I'm doing the two at a time method, and the other lot, because we need eight, I'm doing eight at a time. So set all the fabrics aside for now and we'll begin with the half square triangles and as we all know for the two at a time method we draw a diagonal line on the back of two of our pieces match those up and then sew a quarter of an inch on each side of that drawn line slice them in half and press and trim for eight at a time here i'm starting with a six inch square and i am going to draw a diagonal from corner to corner in both directions. I'm then going to match that up with my other piece of fabric and sew one quarter of an inch on each side of both of these drawn lines. I'll catch you back up once that's been done and explain the further steps for the eight at a time method. Let's go. For the eight at a time method, we need to cut our block once our lines have been sewn in half, both vertically and horizontally. For the six inch square that you should start with for this, you would place that on the three inch line. I originally did not cut a six inch square and at the trimming I noticed my half square triangles were not right and I redid it, so use six inches. Once you've cut it both vertically and horizontally, you then just cut along the drawn lines. We then press all of those and we get ready to trim. As everyone would be aware if you've seen any of my past catalogue of videos, I trim my half square triangles two at a time. This just is speedy for me. But if your preferred method is one at a time and using any other tool, that's fine. I just use a six and a half inch square and as you can see me doing here, I line up my diagonal on my stitching line. I make sure that I have enough material outside my required cut line of two and a half inches. I trim two sides, I rotate the block and I trim the remaining two sides. Repeat this with all 12 of your half square triangles. With our half square triangles done, it's now time to move on to our two different lots of flying geese units as we need four of each in this pattern i am as i said at the beginning using the four at a time method if you need in-depth instructions on this method please refer to the card in the top right hand corner of the screen which will take you to a video flying geese four at a time in a nutshell we take our four smaller squares we draw a diagonal line we place two of these on the diagonal across the large square and sew a quarter of an inch on each side of that drawn line. We then slice that in half on our drawn line and press our peaks out and that will result in a love heart shaped block. 
We then place the remaining two of our four squares in the corner, pointing out towards the part of the material that we haven't slashed. Once again, we sew a quarter of an inch on each side of that drawn line, cut along the drawn line, give a final press, and then we're ready for trimming. While you're watching me through this process, why don't you consider giving a like to my video, clicking the subscribe button, and most importantly, click the little bell icon to make sure you're notified of all future re releases. Just as the four at a time method is my preferred flying geese method, my preferred trimming tool is also the ultimate flying geese tool from Creative Grids. This tool is very simple to use. On the left hand side at the top is a chart with all of the sizes that you can make with the tool. And that gives you a reference line to use. You simply line up that reference line in the peak and trim two sides. You then rotate the block and the tool. Use that same reference mark on the bottom of the block for the second trim and trim the remaining two sides. Once again, in-depth instructions on this process is contained in my Flying Geese 4 at a Time video, which has been linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. With all of our required pieces now made, it's time to start construction of the top, side and bottom unit required to make our nine patch. We need to grab some of our previously set aside pieces and we are making a total of four of these. So you will lay them out as per the pattern and as you can see me doing here, and then we will sew them together first by doing all of the vertical seams and then finally the horizontal seam along the middle. Let's go. With those two rows sewn, it is now time to press and in both instances we're going to press towards the solid fabric. For, so for the top part that is on the flying geese we will press out to the squares and for the other section we will press in towards the centre and this will allow us to nest these seams before sewing them together.
As I said before with the pressing instructions that I gave, this will allow for these seams to nest when we go to do this vertical seam on all four of our units. You will also need to pay attention to the peak of the flying geese and make sure that you are sewing just to the right of that peak and that way you will not cut off any of your points. With those units sewn together now, we will just press away from the flying geese unit, so towards the centre of the block, and then we will move on to constructing the centre. For the centre we need to grab our four and a half inch square that we cut at the beginning from our dark fabric. We then need to put our remaining flying geese around the outside and then our four half square triangles that we created in the beginning. We will then sew this together in a nine patch fashion, sewing all of the vertical seams first and then the two remaining horizontal seams. <laughs> You will note here that I have used my clip the seam method to ensure that everything nests nicely and will remain flat because I do have a bulky seam otherwise. Now we just need to press these out towards the squares in the top and the bottom and towards the centre in the centre row. With all of our vertical seams sewn, it's now time to just give it a good all over press and really set the direction that those fabrics are going before moving on to the two horizontal seams. Now that we have all of our pieces and parts made for the final block construction, we need to lay it out as per the pattern and then we finish it in a simple nine patch construction. Because of our pressing along the way, most of our seams should nest nicely for this final part of block. So we'll lay it out, then we'll do all of our vertical seams, followed by the horizontal seams, give it a final press, and we'll be done. You may or may not notice through this part that I struggle with which direction I want to press my pieces in and also as I maneuvered a few of the seams during the sewing 
I have to give them a quick clip. There are no hard and fast rules for pressing your seams or using my clip method. Just do whatever works and gives you the flattest block. Thanks for joining me again this week, folks. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel, but most importantly, hit that little notification bell so you won't miss any of my updates. Bye for now, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>